Welcome back everybody. I'm constantly running into Muslims who do not know very basic, simple facts about the standardized Quran. In this video, we'll do what we normally do and what other channels like this do, and that is tell Muslims things that their authorities would apparently rather keep concealed. We'll proceed through this video with a series of questions. What do Muslims really mean when they say the Quran? When did a Quran become the Quran? Why did a Quran become the Quran? And what are some problems with the Quran? So let's get right to those first two questions. When Muslims talk about the Quran, they're primarily referring to the standardized Egyptian edition, which was first published on July 10th, 1924 in Cairo, and it's now widely seen as the official text of the Quran. After it was standardized in Egypt, the Hafs recitation from which the standardized text is allegedly derived quickly became the standard not only in Egypt, but throughout most of the Muslim world, though numerous Arabic Qurans do exist with thousands of differences between them. So for the first two questions, the Quran actually refers to the standardized Quran, which is the 1924 Egyptian edition. Now for the third question, why did a Quran become the Quran? In the early 20th century, the shape of the Quran would have seemed anything but clear. In fact, the Egyptian government was motivated to begin the project that would lead to the Cairo Quran edition due to the variations or errors, as an appendix to the Cairo edition describes them, found in the Quranic texts. I've now communicated something to Muslims in just a few minutes that many would go their whole lives without knowing if their authorities had their way, such as the authoritarian nature of the Islamic religion. So the first three questions are fairly straightforward. When Muslims say the Quran, they're referring to the standardized Cairo edition. This was standardized in 1924, and it was motivated by errors found in Quranic texts being imported for use in Egyptian schools. Now, what are some problems with the Quran? Well, first, from the Muslim perspective, it seems to me that the standardized edition is in disobedience to what Muhammad taught. We have several hadith attributed to Muhammad that say who to learn the Quran from. Of course, there are four prominent persons mentioned. And the standardized Quran is not based on any of these four readings. The reality is, if Muhammad's orders were followed, there would be no standardized Quran because these four recitations that Muhammad refers to all have variants, both within themselves and with the standardized 1924 edition. As Gabriel Reynolds says, the Cairo edition is often at odds with manuscript evidence. And as we've seen previously, it didn't take long for these early Quranic variants to cause problems. We've talked recently on this channel about a problem with Surah 33.6. The codices of the four different companions contain a variant that say that Muhammad is the father of the believers. Recall that when Umar heard this variant, he ordered it erased, even though it was attributed to Ubayyub ibn Qab, and Ubayyub ibn Qab was one of the four that Muhammad said to learn the Quran from. When it comes to another major authority, Abdul ibn Masud, it's well known that he only had 111 surahs in his Quran. And it's well known the standardized Quran has 114 surahs. So where did the Egyptian government get their Quran from? It was the work of a government-appointed committee led by Muhammad bin Ali al-Husseini al-Haddad that was meant to establish a uniform text for religious education in Egypt. Now, what's another problem? Well, many Muslims believe that there's a single, unaltered, miraculously preserved Quran that goes right back to Uthman's time. Now, since they're only familiar, in many cases, with the standardized 1924 Quran, then they extrapolate that that Quran that they're familiar with is the unaltered, miraculously preserved Quran that goes right back to Uthman's time. In fact, this is a massive non sequitur. As Muslim scholars al Takulich and Isanalu state, one of the most important questions of Quranic history is the whereabouts of the Musafs attributed to Caliph Uthman and whether any of them reached the present day. Unfortunately, we do not have a positive answer to this question. In our view, this situation is one of the greatest weaknesses of the Islamic world throughout history. So they say we don't have any Uthmanic manuscripts, and we can actually go way back to the 8th century and see the same thing. According to Malik bin Anas, the Uthmanic Codex disappeared. So none of the Uthmanic manuscripts have reached the present day. And if none of them have reached the present day, the Muslims obviously can't claim that the reading in the standardized Quran reflects the Uthmanic manuscripts. 
Now there's another problem that we can talk about, and once again, this lies in the realm of the Muslim authorities. A common belief that the Quran is a single, unambiguous reading is due in part to the bravado of translators, who rarely express doubt about their choices. You see, not only are there problems with miraculous preservation and the Uthmanic manuscripts and so forth, but there are problems with how Muslims conceive of preservation of their texts in general. To put it bluntly, I would say it's all bravado. What I mean by this is you don't get credit for having a low number of variants in your manuscripts when you destroy your manuscripts after you revise or supersede them. If I were to use a biblical example, I could take a manuscript from each book of the Bible and then destroy all the other manuscripts. How many textual variants would I have? Zero, because I only have one manuscript per book. But that doesn't mean that the Bible was miraculously preserved. It just means that I destroyed the rest of the manuscripts with the variants in them. Let's go back to Uthman's time. Uthman sent his copies to various provinces and then ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. So pop quiz. Uthman destroyed all of his Qurans after he made his changes. And a couple of decades later, Al-Hajjaj made another revision to the Quran. What do you think he did with his old Qurans? That's right. He destroyed them just as Uthman had ordered the destruction of all unofficial codices. So too, Al-Hajjaj ordered the destruction of all codices other than his own and copies made from it. Pop quiz number two, Uthman destroyed all of his old Qurans. Al-Hajjaj destroyed all of his old Qurans. What do you think the Egyptian government did after their 1924 standardization? That's right, they destroyed their variant Qurans by sinking them in the Nile River. Now I present to you the three-step process for miraculous Muslim preservation. Step one, revised Quranic manuscripts as needed. Step two, destroy superseded Quranic manuscripts. Step three, observe fewer variants due to destroyed manuscripts. Result, claim miraculous preservation due to fewer variants. So let's summarize what we covered in this video. What do Muslims really mean when they say the Quran? They're referring to the standardized Cairo edition, and this was standardized in 1924. Errors prompted this standardization, and we talked about some problems with the Quran. It appears to disobey Muhammad because Muslims are not following one of the four recitations he prescribed. We talked about problems with miraculous preservation. Even the standardized text is at variance with other manuscripts. We talked about the Uthmanic manuscript problem, and that is that there are none. And then the destruction of manuscripts and the three-step process for miraculous preservation. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.